Okay, here. We're given the total impedance and we want to know the missing value, so the value of this capacitor. Right. Total impedance is 12.1k at 73 degrees and we know that is the sum of the impedance of an inductor here and a unknown capacitor in parallel with that resistor there. So that would be J omega L plus 1 over 1 over ZC plus 1 over ZR. That's just standard result for two components in parallel. And that lot is 12.1K at 73 degrees. Right, well we know omega and we know L and we know ZR. So we could substitute in for those three things straight away. Be J times 2 pi times 100 times 33 plus 1 over 1 over ZC plus 1 over ZR 27K. Okay, so that's the sum that we're trying to do, and we're trying to work out the unknown impedance of this capacitor here. Probably best to do that in stages. Firstly, this term here is going to be 12.1k at 73 degrees minus j times 2 pi times 100 times 33. That's the term in brackets here just taken by taking this across to the other side of the equation here. Once I've got that, if I turn this upside down by taking the inverse of it, that must be equal to 1 over ZC plus 1 over 27K. I'll just work that one out for now. That's 1 divided by 12.1k at 73 degrees minus j times 2 times pi times 100 times 33. So that whole thing is about 0.1 milli or about 102 micro at 69 degrees. So 102 micro at 69 degrees is 1 over zc plus 1 over 27k. Back to here. Next, this sum at the bottom here I've got to try and work out. And that I can most easily do by taking the 27k here across to the other side and then I would write 1 over zc is 102 micro at 69 degrees minus 1 over 27k. And that's fairly easy to work out. Excuse me. Just get a bit more space here. Um, once I've done that, I can work out ZC. And ZC would be 1 over that lot. But I'm not going to do that, because I know that ZC is 1 over J omega C. And therefore, 1 over ZC must be just J omega C. So I could write down here this, my 1 over ZC, is J omega C is equal to 102 micro at 69 degrees minus 1 over 27K. And therefore, my capacitance is just this lot divided by J omega. Right, let's give it a go. That's 102 at 69 degrees, and it's 102 micro, minus 1 over 27k, divided by j, and divided by omega, which is 2 times pi times 100. And the answer I get is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 7, and there's no phase. It's real, which is good 
because I would expect the value of capacitance to be a real number. And it's just that, 1.5 times e to the minus 7, which is probably going to be 150 nanofarads. Yep, spot on. Great. It might look a bit daunting, but actually, provided you keep your head straight and deal with everything as complex numbers, the formulas are just the same as the ones we were using last term with real resistances. P.S. There's also this type of question, which I haven't talked about so far. In this case, we cannot use the simple complex arithmetic that we used before because we're not told what the total impedance is. We're only told the magnitude of the total impedance. In this case, we have to go back and look at the Argand diagram and take account of the fact that we know that a resistor has a impedance which is perfectly real and a capacitor has an impedance which is negative and purely imaginary. What we can write here is that 1 over the total impedance is 1 over the value of this resistor, which is currently unknown, plus 1 over the complex impedance of this capacitor, which is just J omega C since the complex impedance of a capacitor is 1 over J omega C, the inverse of the complex impedance, sometimes called the complex admittance of the component, is just J omega C. Now, we know that the resistance is perfectly real, and we know that this term here is going to be imaginary and positive. So if we plotted these things on an Argand diagram, we would have this kind of thing. 1 over the resistance is positive and real. It's going out in this direction here, along the real axis. J omega c is perfectly imaginary, and it's positive imaginary. So that would be going up there. And that distance there up the imaginary axis is going to be omega c, and this is going to be 1 over r. We're working in admittances here, not impedances. The sum of these two is going to be this complex vector there, which is 1 over z total. It's the total admittance of this circuit. And we know that the total admittance of this circuit is... 18k3 to the power of minus 1. Therefore, the magnitude of 1 over z total must be 1 over 18k3. So, I have a right angle triangle in my plot of the admittances, 1 over the impedances here. I know the size of this side of the triangle here, 1 over r. I know the size of this side of the triangle here, omega c. And I know the size of this side of the triangle here. That's going to be 1 over z total, which is 1 over 18k3. I can apply Pythagoras. 1 over 18k3 squared must be 1 over r squared plus omega squared c squared. And from that, I should be able to work out r because everything else here is known. I know omega, just a quick check. Omega is 2 times pi times 5 kilohertz. And I know c, it's 1.5 nanofarads. Therefore, all I have to do is rearrange this formula in terms of r. Clearly, 1 over r squared is going to be 1 over 18k3 all squared 
minus omega squared times c squared. So if I take the square root of that lot, that should give me 1 over r. And to get my final value of r, I just have to take this square root and take the inverse of it. And the calculator should be able to handle that. Let's give it a go. Right, 1 divided by, in these brackets, is the square root of, well first, 1 over 18k3 squared, and then subtract omega, which is 2 times pi times 5,000, times c, which is 1 nanofarad 0.5 and all that squared and then just close that square root uh, close that bracket and we should be there excellent for this type of problem you have to know and use the fact that resistors are perfectly real and capacitors or inductors are perfectly imaginary in their impedance